Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on bacterial skin infections. I will cover on impetigo, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, folliculitis, furuncles, and carbuncles. Cellulitis and erysipelas, and erythrasma. First, for impetigo. Impetigo is a common, highly contagious, superficial bacterial skin infection. There are two main presentations. Bullous impetigo, caused by a staphylococcal epidermolytic toxin and non-bullous impetigo, which can be caused by either Staph aureus or Streptococcus, or both. Staphylococcus is the most common agent in temperate climates. Streptococcal impetigo is seen in hot, humid areas. Non-bullous disease particularly affects young children, often in late summer. It can be sporadic, although outbreaks can arise with overcrowding or poor hygiene, or in institutions. Coexisting skin conditions, such as abrasions, infestations, or eczema, predispose to impetigo. In bullous disease, the toxins cleave the superficial epidermis, causing intact blisters containing clear to cloudy fluid, these last two to three days. The face, scalp, and limbs are commonly affected, but sites of eczema can also be involved. In non-bullous impetigo, a thin-walled vesicle develops, ruptures rapidly, and is rarely seen intact. Dried exudate, forming golden crusting, arises on an erythematous base. For diagnosis of impetigo, constitutional symptoms are uncommon. A bacterial swab should be taken from blister fluid or active lesions before treatment. Around one-third of the population are nasal carriers of staphylococcus, so nasal swabs should also be obtained. For treatment of impetigo. In mild localized disease, topical treatment with mupiracin or fusidic acid usually suffices and limits spread. Staphylococcal nasal carriage should be treated with topical mupiracin. In severe cases, oral flucloxacillin or erythromycin is indicated. If a nephritogenic streptococcus is suspected, systemic antibiotics should be given, as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis can occur. The second topic is on staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. This is a serious exfoliating condition predominantly affecting children, particularly neonates. Systemic circulation of epidermolytic toxins from a staph aureus infection, cause a split in the superficial epidermis and peeling of the skin. The child presents with fever, irritability, skin tenderness, and erythema, often starting in the groin, in the axilla, and around the mouth. Blisters and superficial erosions develop over one to two days. For diagnosis, bacterial swabs should be taken from possible sites of primary infection, such as throat and nose. Diagnosis is made on the clinical appearance and histological examination of a skin snip, taken from the edge of one of the peeling areas, to determine the plane of cleavage and thus exclude the differential diagnosis of toxic epidermal necrolysis, which involves the full thickness of the epidermis. Management consists of immediate systemic antibiotics like flucloxacillin, and supportive measures in an HDU. Family members should be screened and treated for staphylococcal carriage. Next, we look at folliculitis, furuncles, and carbuncles. Folliculitis can be superficial, involving just the ostium of the hair follicle, or deep, which are furuncles and carbuncles. For superficial folliculitis, this is very common, usually minor, and subacute or chronic. It is often infective, caused by staph aureus, but can also be due to physical or chemical injury. In these cases, the folliculitis is usually sterile. Staphylococcal folliculitis is most common in children and often occurs on the scalp or limbs. The pustules usually heal in 7 to 10 days but can become more chronic, and in older children and adults can progress to a deeper form of folliculitis. Whereas for deep folliculitis, a furuncle is an acute staph aureus infection of the hair follicle, which becomes pustular and fluctuant, and is often exquisitely tender. The lesions eventually rupture to discharge pus, and because they are deep, leave a scar. They can progress to form a carbuncle, which is an exquisitely tender nodule, often on the neck, shoulders or hips, and is associated with severe constitutional symptoms. It implies the involvement of several contiguous hair follicles. Treatment, as for furuncles, is with an appropriate anti-staphylococcal antibiotic. The fourth topic is on cellulitis and erysipelas. Cellulitis is inflammation of subcutaneous tissue, due to bacterial infection. In contrast, erysipelas is bacterial infection of the dermis and upper subcutaneous tissue, although in practice it may be difficult to distinguish between them. The most common organism causing both conditions is group of streptococcus. Diagnosis is based on clinical findings of erythema, heat, swelling, pain, and sometimes fever. With a leukocytosis, raised inflammatory markers, and a swab isolating a causative organism. 
erysipelas typically has well-defined edge, indicating involvement of the dermis. It usually affects the face, whereas cellulitis most commonly involves the legs. Blistering and regional lymphadenopathy may occur in both conditions. There is often a predisposing cause, such as a portal of entry for infection, like tinea pedis, or an underlying predisposition to infection such as varicose leg ulcer or diabetes. This picture shows erysipelas. Look at the blistering and crusted rash with raised erythematous edge. For treatment, it is usually treated with an IV antistreptococcal agent such as benzyl penicillin, or in cases of penicillin sensitivity, erythromycin or ciprofloxacin. In mild cases, oral antibiotics are indicated. Lastly, there is erythrasma. Erythrasma is a mild localized infection of the skin caused by Corynebacterium minutissimum, which often is part of the normal skin flora. This bacteria can provoke an asymptomatic or mildly itchy eruption between the toes and in the flexures. Lesions are well-defined and reddish-brown, with some scale. The bacterium is identified by coral pink fluorescence with wood's light. Treatments include a topical azole cream such as myconazole or a topical antibiotic. That's all for this video. Thank you.